Welcome to a new game. Well, or maybe not that old, you rather old. And certainly a game we've played before. Deus Ex. I mean, this is just one of those games that you really just want to get back to. Let's say on a regular basis. Now, let's fiddle with the controls just a little bit. Colors, lava. Mm, yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. Actually, I think, I think the lava theme and red color theme for the HUD I think that's actually pretty good. And that's uh, because for a little for a playthrough that I have in mind. Alright, go to the main menu and we could start a new game. Right. Now, I suppose, before jumping into the actual game, let's play the training level first. Yeah, let's do that. Kind of re myself with the controls. It's been a while since I last played this game. I figured you'd be sick of drills by now. Hopefully our training exercises will be more interesting than what they've had you doing at the academy. All right. Open the door by clicking the right mouse button. The right button uses items in the world. The key on the desk opens encryption-based nanotech locks. When you pick it up, it will automatically be added to your key ring. Use the key ring to unlock the door and proceed to the next area. Well, I'm not going to pretend to be a new player to the game and not knowing who these characters are. But we'll just press on. So yeah, keyring. You're going to get a lot of equipment during these exercises. Press F1 at any time to access the inventory screen, which will let you add and remove items from the tool belt. Press F2 to view your current goals and any notes you may decide to take. On a typical mission, a UNATCO agent's objectives are logged electronically so that he can stay on task at all times. Pick up a weapon and try to break open those crates. One of them's indestructible, but the others contain things you might find useful. Our first real choice in the game. Crowbar or knife? Crowbar or knife? Hmm. Well, I mean, crowbar, of course, been kind of a reference to the, 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 what's that? Half-Life, yeah. Okay, we'll take the, we'll take, we'll take both. Yeah, so F1, inventory. And so, of course, if you click on an item, you can see some statistics. A crowbar, well, it's a melee weapon, so it falls to the skill category of low tech. 15 pounds does 6 points per 6 points of damage. A knife does only 5 points, it's 10 pounds. It's also a low tech weapon, but only takes one slot. So this is pretty much. This is pretty much all the stuff we can carry, plus of course, keys and ammo. I mean, ammo and keys, they don't 
you don't have to use your inventory slots for ammo and keys but you do have up you do have limitations to how much of each type of ammo you can carry but aside from that and f2 primary goals at the moment no primary goals no secondary goals and no notes and of course you can if you you can add your own notes if you all right. Pick up the lockpick and use it to open the door. Lockpicking takes time and expends the self-assembling resources of modern lockpicks. Just be patient and remember your training. At higher skill levels, you won't need as much time or lockpick resources to pick a lock. Right, so this is locked. Doors have two strength values. The door strength tells you how much damage the door takes before being destroyed. The lock strength tells you how many lock picks will be required to pick the lock. Some doors have an infinite strength and an infinite lock strength. That means you have to find a key. Right. Code to the door has been stored in that data cube. Right click on the data cube to read the contents, then type the code into the keypad. You activate the keypad with the right mouse button, just like you activate a data cube or any object in the world. Okay. We'll make this one easy for you. To open the door, use the code 0012. Got it? Hide me. What was it? Nine nine eight seven four five nine zero 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 one two. Okay. Use the disposable multi tools on the table to hack the keypad up ahead. A multi tools resources are finite. When a tool is depleted, it becomes useless. The manual describes other uses for the multi tool. At higher skill levels, you'll need less time and multi-tool resources to hack a given device. Right. Okay, data cube. Almost done, but one quick note. I'm not exactly uh, the expert on this sort of thing. For that, you'll have to check with Sam Carter when you get to Liberty Island. But remember that uh, there's any number of other ways to open a door including using explosives or fighting a security computer by me. In that code training manual, section 3C, multi-tools. A multi-tool is not really a tool at all, not in the usual sense of the word, but a disposable electronic device that utilizes electromagnetic resonance detection and frequency modulation to dynamically alter the flow of current through any uh, non-hardened circuitry. Skilled agents can use the multi-tool to manipulate code locks, cameras, auto gun turrets, alarms and other security elements. Note that multi-tools cannot be used for computer information extraction. See section 5.8 Hacking. Yeah, there's three of them. Let's see if it'll be cheesy. So, toss our supplies. I'm here to pick up all munitions and equipment. Thanks for the cooperation, Agent. All right. We aren't done yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you're a little cheesy like that, you can <laughs> smuggle stuff through. 
Lying in front of you is a brave cadet who volunteered to be rendered unconscious for this next training exercise. Highlight and search him to find the key to the medical room. Afterward, pick up his body and place it on the medical table so that one of my aides can revive him once the exercise is over. Right. Take the stuff. Open the door. Pick the guy. And, uh... Good work. Get someone down there immediately to revive Private Winslow. Move on to the next area. You can bet this won't be the last time we send you into a dark room. Turn on your light augmentation and find the exit on the other side. Just press F12 by default. Right. Well... Oh. I think F12 is also the, uh... It's still so the button for, um... Uh... Ah... Uh, wait. Yeah, for screenshots, so... Unfortunate. You're not a mech, but you're enough of a machine to need repair bots now and then. If you used up some bioelectric energy getting through the dark area, for example, this contraption can charge you back up. Yeah, recharge. Congratulations, you completed phase one. Move over the ramp into the next rooms to begin learning movement skills. We'll be watching you through the cameras, like the one you can see up in the corner. In the field, remember that terrorists sometimes use cameras like this in their security grids to set off alarms and alert guards to your location. Right, okay. Jump across the platforms. You'll have to crouch to get under those pipes. If you fall, use these stairs to begin again. Okay. Crouch. The jump button. Yeah, first try. You need to go through the door up ahead, but it's blocked. Those wooden crates are too big to jump and too heavy to lift, so use the metal crates near the wall to build steps. To pick up a crate, walk up to it so that it highlights, then click the right mouse button to drop something you're holding. You can press the tab key by default. Right, so... Pause it to here. And we're through. Now go up the ladder at the other end of the room. By default, you look up and use the arrow keys to climb. There's a little hidden candy bar in here. some complaints about this swimming obstacle because the water's contaminated. Recruits forget to grab the hazmat suit and end up in my office. Not pretty. Or they forget that they have to put the suit on by selecting it and pressing the left mouse button. Remember that the hazmat is disposable. You can wear it only once and it operates only for a fixed duration. Use the ramp on the other side of the pool to climb out. Right. Yes, of course. Press the Number key for your item, and then press the right key so it activates. Or you can go directly to your inventory, or you can go to your inventory and use the notice. Well, there's equip and unequip, and then there's use. Oh, and then there's drop your items. <laughs> Oh, wait. That's just what I was preaching. Okay. Yeah. I'll probably drown.
These medical pots, normally used for quick healing, are of particular interest to you, JC, because you need a bot's help to install new augmentations. If you took any damage during a swim, now's a good time to get patched up. And in your equipment. That's oh. right. No cheating. Okay, I, I was too much in a hurry that time. Okay, menu. Okay, you got me. Got you running the course, huh? Yep. Welcome to the combat training area. I am Gunther Herman, and I will be monitoring your progress here. We will start with weapon familiarization. Huh. After my, uh, my room is very bright right now. Your first exercise will be to learn a little about aiming and targeting. Step up to the shooting range to the west. The targets are released by using the buttons on the counter. Release the first target and take a few shots with one of the pistols until it is destroyed. Notice the targeting reticle appears when you aim at a target. Grab pistol and... Good. If you hold your aim for a few seconds before firing, you will notice the reticle starts out wide and tightens as you hold. The longer you aim as a target without moving, the greater your accuracy will become. Release the second target and aim before shooting this time. Good work. Now proceed to the next area. Okay. I'm out of um, rounds. I'm here to pick up all munitions and equipment. Thanks for the cooperation, Agent. All right. This is a rifle range. Here, you will learn one of the ways skill level makes a difference in your accuracy. Step up to the shooting range. The targets are released using the buttons on the counter. Release the first target and destroy it with the rifle. Use the rifle scope by pressing the left bracket key to turn the scope on. Excellent. Now we are going to raise your skill with rifles to master level. Release the second target and destroy it. Yeah, dead eye. Good fuck. As you can see, higher skills give you better range, accuracy and effectiveness. Proceed to the next area when you are ready. And in your equipment. That's right. No cheating. All right. This is the demolitions training area. First, you will learn to use the lamb as a proximity mine. Approach the bay window and you will see a lamb placed on the target board on the black and red wall. Press the first button next to the window and a security bot will be released. Watch as he nears the lamb. Lambs placed on the walls are proximity triggered. This time you will place your own lamb. Take a lamb from the munitions bay and proceed to the red and black wall below. Get as close to the wall as possible when you place the lamb. If you aren't close enough, the lamb will fall to the ground and detonate. Yeah, when you... When your character does this, 
little movement with your hand. That's when he's ready to place it on surface. If, if he's holding it like this, he will throw it. If he's holding it like this, he will attach it. So. Very good, Agent Tenton. You may proceed to the next area for more demolition training. Right. You'll need a few extra lamps for the demolitions area. Here, catch. Hey, I like you. You give me stuff. <laughs> next, you'll need to breach the doors in the hallway. Throw a lamp down to the end of the hall. Once it blows, proceed down the corridor. Notice how the wooden door was destroyed and the metal and barred doors remained. Remember this for future reference. Beyond the destroyed door, you can see a damaged piece of wall you can also breach with a lamp. Try that now. Excellent. Notice that the wall is opened. Look for other weakened walls such as this and your lamp and other explosives will allow you to breach them. Continue through that breach and on to the next section. Gotta start the next section without arms or tools. Rules are rules. The area beyond the door is the grenade defusing facility. Here you will learn how to remove planted explosive devices. Well, we're constantly getting dialogue from the NPCs, so... At each of the corners of this area, you will find a lamp planted on the wall. You must disarm and remove all four lamps before you can proceed to the next section of training. You will need to move up to the lamp quickly and to defuse it by right-clicking. A second right-click will remove the lamp from the wall. Yeah, I was about to say that. I'm not talking too much because we're kind of constantly getting dialogue from these NPCs, so... This was a simulated experience. Real lamps will not be so forgiving. You may proceed to the next area. <laughs> Quick save. That's the post where they take it away. Gotta start the next section without arms or tools. Rules are rules. Yeah, yeah, I know. Wait, oh. Now you will learn to move quietly and conceal yourself so that you will be able to avoid the confrontation altogether. Hmm. Stealth training. The test is simple. Get to the far north door without being spotted by the guards below. If one of them sees you, he will sound an alarm and lock the door. Technicals. Unatical Stealth Guidelines Overview. Stealth is a vital component of all UNATCO operations. When implemented correctly, stealth missions result in the lowest possible ratio of agent and civilian casualties to hostile losses. Situational awareness is key, and agents should not only be familiar with the tactical opportunities offered by the immediate environment, 
but how those opportunities can be exploited to their advantage with the appropriate equipment. Tech goggles allow agents to operate in low-light environments, such as offices or labs where the illumination might otherwise attract attention. With binoculars, an agent can survey an opponent's disposition and determine the best way to evade or eliminate their defenses. A rifle or crossbow equipped with a scope and silencing modifications can be used to interdict targets from a considerable distance, significantly compromising hostile resistance. Other features of the environment can also be used by an agent to enhance their ability to operate covertly or to create useful distractions, disabling security cameras, subverting order guns, and reprogramming bots are all viable tactics employed by experienced agents in the field. All right. Don't let the guards see you. Use the crates for cover and crouch when you move. Movement, Don't sir. Be movement. Distracted. Pick up Somebody and throw an object near them, and they will go investigate uh. the noise. Bottles, plants, flasks, many things will work. All right. Well, I have to restart. You blew it. The alarm just closed the north door. Return to the control room to the south and press the button in the overlook window to restart the test. Yeah, I just wanted this. Uh, I don't know. Tech cab camo. Don't let the guards see you. Stay crouched, stay behind the crates, and stay behind the guards. Right. Well. Oh. Okay, so where are you going? I guess. Hey, who's there? Always remember uh. the four basic tactics to avoid detection. Crouch behind concealment. Stay behind enemies. Move slowly to avoid making noise. And use shadows to conceal yourself. Be alert to every possibility. Oh, looks like I really am rusty. Okay, I'll just quick save it. Oop. Oh, shoot. Okay, finally. Very good. I hope you remember this lesson, Agent. 
They have assigned us to be partners, and I will not stop to hold your hand and repeat myself when we are facing a real enemy. Now for the last test. It's to find a way across the river to the exit on the other side. There's more than one way to get there, depending on your approach and the skills you want to use. It's up to you. Make use of the IFF system to identify enemies. The crosshairs will highlight red over enemies, green over allies, and white over neutrals. Hmm. And the code was zero zero eight nine. Okay. Uh. Right. Step up to each hologram for more info. When you're through, go out the opposite door. A deployment of UNATCO troopers is the central component of all UN peacekeeping occupations. NSF, the biggest terrorist threat in the U.S. This national militia group thinks it is fighting the second American revolution. What's this? Step over to the communicator. There's someone who wants to talk to you. Manderley likes to hear which agents find this area. They're usually the ones who take terrorists by surprise in the field. Your brother Paul, for instance. All right, carry on. Don't let it go to your head. An inexpensive security bot. A favorite of third world countries and corporate security divisions. Not so mobile, but don't be fooled. We've lost plenty of agents to its well-armored assault gun. Like other bots, it's difficult to damage with ordinary bullets. This Page Industries walking turret, marketed to governments worldwide, is the workhorse of most national military forces. Due to the heavy armor, they take little damage from ordinary bullets. If you come up against a bot, you should use an EMP grenade, scrambler grenade, or some kind of explosive. All right. Oh, by the way, yeah, <laughs> let's have a victory candy bar for you know clearing the obstacle course. So. This is the old augmentation technology. Hopefully about to be phased out. Notice the reliance on electronics and servo mechanics. A maintenance nightmare. If I had two credits for every repair manual that made me file in my office in the med lab. The coalition's new nano augmented agents are nearly indistinguishable from the general population. Except that you and your brother don't know how to smile, even for a picture. Well, so I guess our smile is not augmented. Sufficiently impressive and early success for the whole organization. Thanks. You from the United Nations? 
Your augmentations are a go. The real test comes next. Active duty. I'm ready, sir. Yes. Yes, you are. Right. And with that, that's the end of the tutorial.